Hello everybody and it's time for the World of Wayne reveal for the time machine and this is what it's looking like here. Now I actually recorded uh, some of this over on my workbench of it all working uh, but it did occur to me after I finished filming hopefully that gave you a quick insight of what you're about to see it did occur to me after filming and I turned it off for the last time I'm probably never going to power this again because <laughs> it's going to go on a shelf up here and um, I don't plan to have it powered or lit and I can't have it spinning all the time. That would just drive me crazy. So uh, it's now a static model. So uh, interesting, but uh, it is nice to know that I've got the potential for it to work. Uh, I had got it pa uh, powered by um, a power supply in the back, but here, as you can see, I've got it on battery power now. But I'll uh, turn that off uh, before I show you the big reveal of this. This was an amazing build, I have to say, and I said, it, just looking at it, the reason I've brought it up here is just so you can see the size of it. It's pretty much bigger than the ET spaceship we did, uh, and it towers over the Orca as well. This one six scale is absolutely ginormous, but uh, I know you're here for the reveal, so let me show you exactly what this does. Okay, what we have here is the World of Wayne finished time machine, which I'm really impressed with, I'm really happy with. Uh, as you can see, it's in its stop position, so the brake lights on and the date lights are on. Uh, one of the stipulations was to have the arm reds lift. I've actually got both sides of mine lifting, but unlike the other two, my little lever here doesn't come off. Um, but it was a struggle, this whole thing. Now, the whole chair in the back is flocked. Uh, I've even flocked this surface here, uh, and pretty much the disc is the original disc. So pretty much everything on this model is the original pieces, including the dome as well. The only thing that isn't is the metal bowling pin, as we've been calling it, that Phil managed to source. I never used any of the other metal items that you can see there, but that was the bowling pin done. So we managed to get the Spreeverse Challenge of the armrest coming up. The thing is lit up. Does it work? So. When I turn this on, as you can see, the lights come on. And more importantly, the disc is spinning. So I'll just turn that off. Now, when you turn it off, unfortunately, you see how sharp that goes to stop. There's no uh, there's no leeway to be going like uh, fast to gradual slow. It goes uh, completely uh, to stop. But in this position here, just so you can see, the lights are on slow and then they go really fast. So uh, pretty cool. Now these cages here that came from Lou, I mean, they really kick off this model. That one there and the one at the back there. But again, this is the original disc. This isn't Lou's disc. Uh, it hadn't turned up, so I just did my own thing for it. Uh, but there you go. That is the time machine completed, which I'm really happy about. And then one more time, this time, that's the lever, by the way. Let's go backwards in time. And uh, as you can see, there you go. Challenge complete. Now I have turned the lights off because I didn't really explain uh, the lights that we've got on here. <laughs> so apart from the brake lights that we've done, and I obviously made these coil switches as you saw in the last video, we do have cone lights here and here to go on as well. So if I start this running, the other lights I haven't showed you is the cone lights here and also the rear cone lights on as well. So when I turn this back off, like that, and the brake light comes on, they turn off, as you can see. And then once again, if I was to start this, I like the sepia tone this light gives. As you can see, cone lights on at the back and the brake lights turned off. Pretty happy how <laughs> that looks. Excellent.